17. I call this meeting to order and ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Ahrens? Here. Kammerer? Here. Carbonero? Here. Daney? Here. Hopkins? Here. Rinky? Here. President Wallace? Here. We've requested that um, Reverend Susan Terrell from the Emanuel United Church of Christ do our invocation this evening. Reverend? Let us be in the spirit of prayer. Listening God, you care for us and care for all of the things that matter to us, big and small. We ask that you be with us tonight and help each of us to place in perspective how we are being called to serve, to make responsible and fitting decisions, to make choices that benefit all, and to realize we're in this together. Bless the citizens of this community and those who have been made promises to serve. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. your chair. Next item we have this evening is our consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda will be enacted in one motion. There will be no additional discussion on items on the consent agenda. Um, this evening's consent agenda includes um, the bills list from February 21, 2017, and under Planning and Zoning Committee, a zoning map update. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Nobody want to add? Does anybody want to add anything? Yes. Oh. Let's start that over. Does anybody want to add anything to the consent agenda? Yes, Mr. President, I'd like to add both items under the Police and Health Committee, uh, E1 and E2. Those are uh, amendments to uh, agree with the state of Illinois rules and regulations. I don't think we need any discussion on that. Anybody have any problems with that? Not at all. All right, then I'll entertain a motion to amend the consent agenda to include the bills list from February 21, 2017. Um, the zoning map update under Planning and Zoning Committee and adding the Police and Health Committee um, code amendments to cannabis and drug paraphernalia and code amendments to seizure and impoundment of vehicles. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Carbonero, seconded by Trustee uh, Kammerer. Um, will the clerk please call the roll. Trustee Ahrens? Yes. Kammerer? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Daney? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Rinky? Yes. A motion carries. I'll entertain a motion to approve the amended consent agenda. So move. Second. Moved by Trustee Carbonero, second by Trustee Hopkins. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Daney? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Ranky? Yes. Ahrens? Yes. Kammerer? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. That motion carries. I'll entertain a motion to approve the board minutes from January 23. Um, and January 30 and February 7, 2017. So, so January 30, 23, 30 of 26, uh, 2017 and February 7 of 2017. So moved. Second. By Trustee Kammerer, seconded by Trustee Carbonero. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Kammerer? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Daney? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Ranky? Yes. Aarons? Yes. That motion carries. And this evening we're going to hear from our treasurer. Mr. Treasurer, could you give us a report? Yes, thank you. Uh, in, included in your packet is the treasurer's report for December, December uh, 2016. That's through 10, 10 months of the fiscal year, and uh, there is um, nothing unusual report in the, in the uh, December uh, report. Um, motor fuel tax, 93216 That's down from the prior year, but the prior year was usually high, so uh, it is on track uh, as estimated for this year in tax. Uh, sales tax, $212,000 uh, reported. And um, that was right on, just basically within $200 of last year. We're, we're uh, on schedule to be up 4% uh, sales tax overall for, for this year. That's, that's all to report on uh, the report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Treasurer. Does anybody have any questions for the Treasurer? I think it's curious to note that um, the uh, sales tax, it'll be interesting to see if we do have to acquire, now that we have the ACE hardware and uh, hopefully we'll acquire a new grocer soon and we'll be able to hopefully recognize some increase in that. It'll be exciting. 
I have a quick question. On the MFTs, it says we have uh, one point or four point one million dollars in our MFT account for the state. Is that Yes, what, what happened was when we issued the, the road resurfacing bonds, the 2012 bonds, and we did the, the streets program for three years, we didn't use MFT money so that it accumulated for those three years while, while um, we were using the, the road bonds. So we do have a, a surplus in the MFT fund right now. Yeah, is this pretty typical for a municipality of our size to have $4.1 million in that account? No, no, it's not. That's because we, we did go the three years without using it. Uh, we'll, I think we have in our budget to use two million, so we're going to use a, a over two million this year. So we bring in a million, we're going to use two million. So we'll start working on the surplus. Thank you, Mr. Downey. Anything else? Moving on, uh, no treasurer's re or president's report this evening. Does anybody have any questions for staff? I have a quick question about um, the bills list from last week, or from our last board meeting. Um, Christopher Burke did some engineering work for us at the Rizika parking lot. I was just curious, what did that pertain? Uh, in the budget for next year, um, we have Rizika field parking lot scheduled to be resurfaced. So they're doing some of the engineering to get that resurfaced. Is this actually put that's going to be the only amount that we're really going to see from Oh, no. Engineering They'll, company, or is there going to be additional engineering services? There'll be additional design work. It's scheduled to go out to bid this summer with construction probably this late summer fall. So they'll be doing engineering to get the. We have to work with ComEd to get the agreement done there. Um, we have stormwater that needs to be uh, worked through to make sure that we stay away from having to put in stormwater detention, which right now we believe we can avoid. Yeah. Um, so there's a whole engineering design that has to get put together. So they're working on that. Is that going to go out to bid, or is FERC Engineering just going to do it? FERC is doing the design. Because I know when I we had our uh, uh, 2017 through 21 capital budget review, we talked about trying to save money and you know bid out projects, especially to do with engineering, to try to save you know in that avenue, not necessarily in the construction end of it. So I'm just curious why this did not go out to bid. We don't typically <laughs> bid engineering, but um, when for this project we looked at the consultants that we've used in the past. Um, the main issue being stormwater detention uh, and making sure to avoid that. Uh, Christopher Burke has done several stormwater projects for us and has done a good job. So we move forward with Christopher Burke on that. Great. Thank you, Mr. Dinges. Any other questions? It's awfully quiet tonight, isn't it? It is. All right, moving on. Town hall meeting. Uh, anyone who'd like to address the board, please step up to the microphone. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, try to keep your comments to three minutes. Yes, my name is uh, David Lawrence, and I live at 640 White Oak Lane in the Walnut Hills subdivision. Um, I had uh, written to the board regarding the property at the northeast corner of Lake in 59, and I believe Trustee Reinke had um, followed up with me on that. Um, you know, a lot of the concerns myself and my neighbor have with that area, that whole area along Lake Street and even along 59, is the lack of any sort of development. I've been a resident here for 10 years, and I've not seen any development along there. Um, what I could find on the village website, there is a plan from 2004. I know there's a TIF district in place, but... You know, what this is leading to and the conditions of these properties are, are just getting worse and worse. Um, I, the, the property that's adjacent to mine is the one that was deforested last fall, if, if, if you've ever been by there, 59 and 20. And it's just turning into blight. It's just it's the horrible conditions. The owner of the property is, well, I just won't say it, but... Um, you know, we've been just putting up with tenants. Um, I would like to publicly acknowledge the Bartlett Police Department for handling our concerns with the tenants there. But, uh, 
you know, what I would just like to see, and I can speak on behalf of my neighbors, is just, you know, maybe an updated plan for the area. I know that intersection, there's a lot of challenges to it, the way it's designed. I know you've been waiting on to hear from IDOT. They seem to come up with a new plan every two or three years. <laughs> so um, I would just like to see, the, you know, it's kind of the same level of commitment to that part of town that I see, you know, for downtown and for the various industrial parks around here. I would just like to see, you know, maybe some updated plans for the area. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Anyone else? Hearing none, we'll move on to the Standing Committee reports this evening. Our first Standing Committee report is Planning and Zoning Committee, Chairman Ranke. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the only item we had was uh, on the consent agenda. Thank you, Chairman Ranke. Next uh, Standing Committee report is the Building Committee for Chairman Hopkins. Thank you, President Wallace. There is nothing to report tonight. Thank you, Chairman Hopkins. Next, we have Finance and Golf Committee, Chairman Daney. Mr. President, we have nothing to report this evening. Thank you, Chairman Daney. Um, next, we have a License and Ordinance Committee, Chairman Ahrens. Thank you, Mr. President. Our only uh, item is Executive Session Minutes Review, and I would gratefully allow uh, our learned counselor to take this. Mm. Bear with me. I don't have much of a voice this evening. Um, so the village is supposed to do a semi-annual review of their existing ex executive session minutes. Uh, this is a little late. Um, but it's a re So in the packet, you have a section of new mi minutes of executive session minutes that the board hasn't approved yet. There's a uh, second tab where I recommend that certain minutes be held, and another tab where uh, I recommend those minutes uh, be released. And you have a resolution that follows that. So in your packet, you have all of the minutes, new uh, and old, and the old are broken down um, relative to a staff recommendation of which to hold and which to uh, release. And if the board passes that resolution, that would accomplish that. So at this time, I would um, move to approve resolution 2017-15. I couldn't hear. 15. You. 15. A resolution approving certain executive session minutes and determining which executive session minutes to release or hold as confidential after semi-annual review and authorizing the destruction of verbatim records of certain closed sessions. Second. Moved by Trustee Aaron, second by Trustee Kammerer. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Carbonaro? Yes. Daney? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Ranky? Yes. Aaron's? Yes. Kammerer? Yes. That motion carries. And that concludes the uh, license and ordinance for tonight. Thank you, Chairman Aarons. Next item under standing committee reports this evening is the Police and Health Committee, Chairman Carbonaro. Thank you, Mr. President. Both items uh, were included on the consent agenda. Nothing further. Thank you, Chairman Carbonaro. And finally, uh, standing committee reports is uh, Public Works Committee, Chairman Kammerer. Thank you, Mr. President. Tonight we have a uh, engineering services agreement for DuPage Water Commission Connect improvements. And uh, uh, perhaps the easiest thing for me to do may be to turn it over to staff. Maybe, Dan, do you have something to say on with regard to that? Sure. Thank you, Trustee Kammer. Um, as you know, at the last meeting, we, uh, the board approved the DuPage water uh, agreements, and we actually have those agreements in hand now. So now we have uh, all the capital improvements necessary in order to make that transition happen. Um, Page Water is in the process of hiring an engineer to do the transmission main to bring it to Bartlett. And what this contract uh, will do is provide the delivery point for DuPage to bring that transmission main. It will consist of uh, likely a metering station where it will 
meter the water that comes from DuPage, which will be uh, DuPage waters, and then from there there'll be a pump station along with reservoirs that will allow us to pump at Lake Michigan water into our system. Um, based on review of the consultants we've worked with and that are in the area, um, Christopher Burke being, they're doing the modeling of our system that will need to be coordinated with DuPage water. Um, and their familiarity with the water study for the past five years. Um, and the, the, uh, the need to be able to get this pump station in place for that transmission main along with the US EPA grant that we're still hoping to get, um, which requires a deadline, has an April deadline. We feel that uh, moving forward with Burke on this project would be the, uh, would be appropriate. We do have um, another $14 million worth of work uh, internal to Bartlett that uh, at that point we would be uh, utilizing the request uh, RFQ RFP process and looking at consultants to complete that work. Thank you. That being said, um, I would move the Village Board approve resolution uh, 2017-16. 18. 18. We don't go in order anymore, huh? Uh, a resolution approving the engineering service agreement with Christopher B. Burke Engineering Limited. Second. Moved by Trustee Kammer, second by Trustee Daney. Is there any discussion? And I have a question with regards to part of the terminology in here. It, how likely, I mean, a part, part of this, part of the design for the engineering company was on the storage tanks, apparently. And those, sto those storage tanks are for just to hold the water before they go and pump. But then there seemed to be a clause in there where it said that it, it potentially wouldn't be metal. It could be concrete. And if so... Does that lower the cost of the, of the, of the project considerably or not? Uh, that's two to be determined. When we go into the design, we'll look at both of those. We'll do estimating with both of the vendors that provide steel and concrete. Right. And at that time, and it's all dependent on the commodities, steel prices go up, the uh, steel reservoirs will end up being higher, concrete. So we leave that option open so that and we can e actually bid it that way as a alternate steel versus concrete and see where the pricing actually comes in. But these reservoirs are where the Lake Michigan water will basically be brought in. And then from there, we're going to take our pump station and pump it into town. Okay. Is there any advantage of one over the other? Um, there's pros and cons for both. Um, steel, uh, You've got, I mean, steel, you got it more, a little bit more maintenance than concrete, but there's advantages for both. So it'll get down to the pricing, and then uh, from there we'll look at the life cycle cost analysis for it, for each option. I was just curious because I thought it was unusual. I didn't know there was an option like that. So, okay, thank you. I have a question. Could another engineering firm do this cheaper? Um, that I don't know. Um, I believe that Burke would be able to do it most economically because they're already familiar and are already doing the modeling. A new consultant would have to come in there and do modeling or utilize uh, some of Burke's modeling and doing that coordination. They'd have to get up to speed on all that. Um, Burke is already very familiar with it. Um, there's definitely other consultants that can do the work, um, but we feel with the timelines involved that uh, for this portion of the project we should be, we're recommending going with Christopher Burke. Right. And we looked at cost-wise, typically a project like this is in that 5 to 8% of construction costs, and Burke is down at the 5%. So we felt, based on our review, we felt they were giving us a good value for the engineering that's involved. Other projects that Burke Engineering has done for us, their costs you know, estimates for the projects, have they always been lower than they anticipated? They are, as far as their construction, like they put together a construction estimate and then Correct. The project bids. I think we had with the FEMA project, 
those some of those costs got uh, higher, and it was all due to uh, unit costs on earthwork and disposal and all that. Um, but they're estimates, so I mean they're going off of the best information that's available at that time when it actually bids and how much time delay there is from the estimate being uh, done to when the project's actually built factors into a lot of that. Didn't they have to re-engineer that FEMA job to try to get the cost down? Yeah, we ended up doing some re-engineering, um, still accomplished the same net result of the project was we still got what we were looking for. So we were able to, and actually that project ended up coming in under budget. The, the end result was the project came in under budget. Thank you. Anyone else? Any none, will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Daney? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Rinky? Yes. Aarons? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. That motion carries. Mr. President, that's all we have under public works. Thank you, Chairman Cameron. Um, Next item we have this evening is new business. Does anybody have new business to uh, bring up? I do. Um, I would just like to uh, bring the attention to the board that um, we've had. I've had conversations with um, Senator Congressman Roskam in uh, Washington um, in lieu of what we're trying to do in our TOD plan. Um, instead of going to the state of Illinois, which would be a waste of time under his opinion, um, he has given us a couple of people to contact for federal funding. Um, we do have some other projects that we're working on, but usually when you apply for federal funding, they want some kind of drawings. So the, uh, the topic of what I discussed with him was uh, moving the platforms downtown and also looking at a underpass. So what we would need is the approval to apply for the money and that would require drawings. Okay. So basically we, we're, before we can ask for money, we have to show them what we want to do. Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine that. Okay. So what would you, um, are you proposing any specific or just in general? I don't know if I can make that motion tonight or if we have to do that later on. No, we'd have to put it on a committee, I would imagine. Okay, so if we can do that for discussion in the future. So I guess one of the things would be searching out what kind of grants you're talking about, you know, what, what they pertain to. Anything with uh, moving the platform, anything with the, um, uh, the, the TOD plan. Mm -hmm. um, Does it have to be downtown or could it pertain to like the Lake It pertain to anything. It's just that in order for us to ask for that money, we need some kind of plans or a program. So um, am I saying that right? of shovel-ready projects that we keep updating all the time when we send it to all our legislators in the event there there is some um, grant opportunities and um, we can certainly add the the platforms um, move to it but as Vince said we need to have some kind of parameters for that project if you want to add that to the list yeah. okay and so I, I, I do believe we have some older drawings um, I don't know if you came up with those or not Jim I just go and look at the drawings that we have, and they really are showing the existing configuration. Um, when we, we don't want those back, yeah, we did that back a number of years ago. There were some ballpark estimates on how much it would cost to realign that platform, but I have not found any any estimates. Everything that's downstairs is related to, and I mean in our archives, is related to the existing. Uh, configuration where they phased it they built the west edge first and then a couple of years later Metro put the money in for the train station uh, building itself and the platform on the east side so um, so estimates are obviously down there and they're a couple of years old but at that time they were ballparking and we talked to them about realigning the platforms not in two million ish uh, and you know, obviously, it changed signalization and all that. And I know you, Metro, and they have some wiring that may be uh, already there. That uh, you know, but looking at changing the pedestrian crossing, which is about four hundred thousand. So 
that project will have some flux in it from, from the ballpark that we had a few years ago. Okay. So it, go ahead. whatever we need to continue. But the basis of my conversation with them was to let them know that we've already talked to Metro, we've already talked to the RTA, and they have no money. We're not going to talk to the state because they don't have any money. So um, next thing would be to, to try something federally, and that's what he suggested. Okay. It seems to be the marching order of the new president is – Re redevelopment, right? So, um, and to um, is it David's um, reference? Do we have? Um, uh, can we pr start getting some more dates on when that twenty and fifty nine intersection is going to be done by IDOT? Well, I, I did. Sorry, it's supposed to be the I very did, next one, right? I did check with them on. We have two intersection projects that are going to be let at the April letting. The Route twenty oh, good. fifty nine one is on the April letting. And so is the 59 and Stearns. Okay. The IDOT programming chief told me that the April letting for the 59 and 21, 20 uh, intersection could move a little bit back to June. Uh, they need to get a final agreement with Streamwood on some sound wall issues. They have subsequently met with Streamwood. I didn't find out the results of that, but if if they if they get the agreement. A local agreement with Streamwood, it'll stay on the April letting. And if it just to comment on that property, we've had that property in court or local adjudication. The last local adjudication was Wednesday. Our local adjudication hearing officer fined the property owner, and that was the second time it's been in. And it's subject to him completing some additional uh, violations that had occurred. And I think the big issue with that property and this gets kind of out of our local adjudication, is that the, he's, the owner of that property is trying to evict those tenants. And there's been issues with that eviction and the process. And, okay. And I, that's why the police have been there. Kind of moving in a different direction along the lines of Chairman Car or Trustee Carbonero's um, thought pattern here. Um, once 20 and 59 does get fixed, we need to have a um, rough shot plan of what we'd lo like that to look like after they get their improvements done. So that whole intersection around there. So I don't think we have any, I've never seen any drawings of what it could look like down the road. Um, where, the, where the development could go in, what could go in where? Um, other than the plan, the redevelopment we, pl we have for our TIF district, which is on the southwest corner. Oh, yeah. At one time that was going to be a shopping center. Um, there's options to do things out there that it's possible to re restart that TIF and expand it to include the southeast and the northeast corner. The northeast corner is o the only parcel we have in the village other than Walnut Hills is the one that's unfortunately behind Mr. Lawrence's house. And that annexed in a number of years ago and it was a subdivision and it was a uh, developer was planning on bringing as Brian said infrastructure to that area and at one and he was going to continue that development pattern through some of those unincorporated properties, but things went south with the economy and he dropped it, he lost the property. The current owner is the current owner, that's all. Okay. Well, during strategic planning, we talked about the entire Route 59 corridor. Mm -hmm. So maybe that, maybe that's part of this. We figure out what we're gonna do, Route 59 from north to south and certainly address the property. Yeah, put a little some development on 59. Yeah, put a little effort into um, showing people what it could be. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Anything else? New business? I'd just like to say I love the new seating arrangement. I do too. Yeah. Really, it's it's really quite a difference. And also, Paula, thanks for the Friday Five, right? And what are you going to do if we have five Fridays in a month? We'll be called. <laughs> the bonus round. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right. Um, so let people know that we will be going in directly into the committee of the whole meeting, and directly uh, following the committee of the whole meeting, we'll have an executive session to discuss personnel pursuant to Section 2C1 of the Open Meetings Act. So, with that, I will entertain a, mo a motion to adjourn our board meeting. Second. Moved by Trustee Aaron, second by Trustee Daney. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Aaron's? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Daney? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Ranky? Yes. We are adjourned.